Starting off her career as a journalist, she is now internationally renowned as a fearless campaigner against child abuse in Sri Lanka. Responsible for startling changes in government policy towards child abuse, she's also a writer of rare distinction and acclaim. ETV Power Women proudly presents Maureen Senegiratna. And welcome to ETV Power Women. Um, today I think we're very honored and privileged to have with us uh, probably the original Power Woman, a renowned journalist and activist, uh, Maureen Senaviratna. Maureen, welcome to the show. Um, Maureen, I'm going to start off by asking you about your career in journalism, because I understand you were 17 when you actually got into journalism. Uh, when I uh, was in school, I had done my uh, O level uh, fairly well. Yeah. And I was supposed to be going into higher education to do right. my A-levels and then the university. Yeah. When I was in the A-level class, somewhere around July of that particular year, I saw an advertisement asking for journalists. Okay. Now, from the time I was a small child, I used to write right. stories, essays, and I was always good at essay writing. Yeah. So when I saw this, I tore a page out of my exercise book and I wrote a letter to the editor and I said, I'd like to become a journalist and I'd like to work on your paper and I'm sure I'll take to journalism like a duck takes to water. <laughs> About one week later, yeah. I got a uh, letter asking me to come for an interview. Okay. When I went for the interview, uh, they asked me various questions about the books I read and things like that yeah. and about this writing. So I said from the time I was very small, I used to write stories and essays and all that. Then about uh, a week after the interview, they offered me the job. Fantastic. It's just like that. <laughs> just like that. Then uh, I decided to take yeah. it rather right. than to continue to go to the university and there were little family problems also. Right. My father was sick. So I thought, it's time I went and worked, and it's something I like to do. Yeah. From the first day, I was about uh, 17. Yeah. Up to now, I still write. Fantastic. It was a very, very interesting line of work, I yeah. must say, and I enjoyed it. I, mean, I still enjoy it. And what was it like being, you know, a young working woman at that time? At that time. In a very male, sort of dominated you profession. Stunned. Now, I was at Lake House, yeah. and Lake House was fairly well equipped. Right. But you know, girls who were working in Fort, yeah. they had no toilets. Really? Yeah, it was My so goodness. bad. The companies never, uh, only they had toilets for men. Right, so they and never expected no, to have women. When girls started to work, they had a very difficult Tough time. time. There were girls working in the peta shops yeah. who used to come all the way to the YWCA in Fort to go to the toilet. My goodness. Uh, the, the conditions for Worth working them. girls was very bad. Yeah. Then my editor asked me to start a column, a yeah. weekly column, on the working girls of Sri Lanka. Right. So I started interviewing them. And yeah. then we brought out all these difficulties issues, and yeah. every day and these issues. We brought them all out. And then the, uh, at that time, the, uh, the unions, there were no unions, workers' yeah. unions. Then unions started demanding the basic facilities, sure. surely a toilet. Yeah. And then the, the company directors had to do something. Right. But at that time, it was the early 1950s, yeah. uh, the facilities were, were very awful. few for them, very few. The salaries were very low. Yeah. Actually, sometimes they got, of course, the value of money was higher at yeah. that time they would have got about 100 rupees a month. Wow. But they worked, but they came out, yeah. and not only teachers and things like that, they came out and started working in every field in the mercantile sector. Yeah. So, you know, you've kind of been a journalist throughout your life, but you've also developed this passion for activism, and, and especially working, you know, with children's rights and abused children. Yeah. How did you get into that? How yeah. did that happened yeah. about uh, 15 years ago yeah. 
there was an organization in Bangkok yeah. uh, which was called the Ecumenical Council right. for the welfare of yeah. uh, ge for general welfare of society. That consisted of Christians, yeah. Buddhists, Muslims, Hindus, all were in that committee. Right. Then uh, one of the directors of that organization visited Sri Lanka. Yeah. I happened as a journalist, yeah. I was known. And yeah. they actually they had a file of my clippings okay. in their office. Wow, so in their they office. knew about yeah. you. Fantastic. In their office. Then somehow they contacted me. Yeah. They contacted me and I took them down to they were particularly involved and concerned about children who were being abused. Yeah. Children who were being sold into right. prostitution oh and things like that. I, we all knew that Hikkadua area it's, and that yeah. southern area, the beach area was notorious for this kind of thing. So I went down with that uh, gentleman, Mr. Yeah. Holden. I went down with him. We saw with our, he saw with his own eyes what, what was, was happening on. on the beach. Then he went back to Bangkok and about uh, one month later, he sent a letter and he yeah. said, we are organizing a little conference in Bangkok. Yeah. Uh, can you please come? Yeah. So I went, there were people from Europe and there were representatives from Asia and Australia, uh, even from America, right. quite okay, a bit so from a North America, Canada, everywhere. M mainly, there were people connected with religious groups. Right. But even so, there were journalists among them. And uh, we had a meeting which lasted for about a fortnight. Okay. Then we went all over on what they called Bangkok by night. Okay. <laughs> Bangkok Just by night, the, my God, it's a terrible place, uh, but yeah. there are very nice places, yeah, but uh, you could see it happening under your eyes. Right. You could see it happening under your eyes. Then we came back for the meeting after all these exposure tours, yeah. and uh, they asked everyone, can you start an organization in your country? Yeah. I had gone with another representative from the Christian Council of Sri Lanka, yeah. and they gave us a little money and we started, uh, actually we didn't even have a name at the yeah. beginning. Then that gentleman from the Christian Council, he called it Protecting Environment and Children Everywhere, okay. P-E-A-C-E. -E. At that time, there was a severe civil war going, going on, on in Sri Lanka. Lanka. So everybody thought we were connected with so, the war. Yeah. But we said, no, no, we are fighting a different war. war. Yeah. Then, uh, little by little, we opted other people to join us, yeah. uh, people who were concerned, people whom I knew through yeah. my earlier work. And now I, we have a committee of five people. Uh, we have a health, uh, some, uh, like a director who knows all about health right, matters. Okay. Then we have uh, Mr. Sunil Gamage, yeah. who goes to the courts yeah. and uh, s supports the child victim right. of, abuse, that, yeah. of abuse. That's a very vital task Part that we yeah. do. We call it legal monitoring. Okay. Then we have uh, seminars. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Kevin Balthazar, he organizes seminars. Yeah. Then a very, very important thing is to give these children education yeah. and not only just general non-formal English education yeah. okay. because English is vital yeah and you'll be surprised how um, these people from the slums and from the poorest areas up it English then they yeah. want English they want to learn English because it's a extra yeah. qualification yeah. even for a job in a hotel Absolutely. or in a restaurant and it's, yeah yeah Right, I'm going to have to stop you there very quickly. Yeah. We're going to go in for a short break. So for everyone watching at home, don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back with a lot more from Maureen. So we'll see you after the break. Welcome back to ECV Power Women. Um, before we went into a break, Maureen was telling us all about her work with peace. Um, so I'd like to just continue, actually, with where you left off. You were t telling us about peace and the work that you do. Well, actually, from journalism, I moved into advertising. Right. And okay. I worked at Grant Advertising at the time under the famous advertising uh, specialist, Mr. Reggie Kandappa. Kandappa. Uh -huh. I actually learned my advertising there. 
I did copywriting. I looked after various accounts. I did. Uh, I was a media rep by course. Uh, I did every aspect of advertising. Uh, I did under him. Then later on, I joined another or advertising organization called Dave Advertising, okay. uh, which was a beginning a mushroom agency. But later on, it vastly grew and improved. Yeah. And I came to know many interesting people yeah. there, and some are still working with me. Uh, then from advertising. Uh, I did all kinds of things. I worked at uh, Cargill's in okay. charge of a department, uh. but that was only six months. Yeah. Uh, then, like that, I moved to everything. And finally, because of this Bangkok thing yeah. that I joined, uh, and we started this organization Station. called Peace. Yeah. Now, Peace works in practically every part of the country yeah. with uh, seminars, right. giving information and advice to people. Yeah of all categories in yeah. the country, all categories, parents, teachers, householders, yeah. uh, doctors, uh, nurses. We have worked with all groups and yeah. we are still continuing to sure. do that. Then we uh, also have leadership because yeah. the idea is to build leadership among these poor right. uh, children, these deprived children. Yeah. So because we can't deal with everyone in yeah. a village, but the leaders who are trained can be the leaders of the village yeah. and they can help other teenagers who are lured into crime yeah. and also the leadership building is a very important focus of ours. Yeah. Uh, the programs are the area representatives uh, find the people. You see we have all started as amateurs but now we yeah. have become experts and uh, various other things whatever it is this is an ongoing crime. Yeah. It is a crime. You have to call child abuse that's, a crime because it uh, destroys terrible. the child, yeah. destroys the child entirely. Uh, most of the cases are hidden yeah. because the family does not want to expose the child. Right. When exposing the child, the family status goes down. down. So many of them cover up. Terrible. But now it has come to a stage uh, that people realize the perpetrator must be punished yeah. and they cannot be punished unless the police are involved. Oh. Uh, we work very closely with the police, yeah. the Women's and Children's Bureau, we right. work very closely yeah. with them and people are beginning to realize that unless there is a police action, Nothing abuse will, will never stop, yeah. abuse will never stop. When I look back at 15 years ago yeah. and I t look now, I can see that there is a great awareness okay. of this and uh, when there is an awareness, action is taken and you can say that uh, there is now, uh, if you can't actually use the word less, yeah. because every year there are new children yeah. uh, to there be abused, uh, definitely it's a bit under control because now also the law enforcing authorities are very active. Right. Yeah, that is a great thing. thing. And do you think that there are stricter sort of laws now in place for the abusers? Do you see them sort of more abusers actually being tr tried in court and going to prison? Do you, do you find that happening a lot more than, than it was previously? With a lot yeah, more yeah, severity definitely. Now? They are being dealt with. They are yeah. being dealt with. They are being dealt with. A lot of them go undercover, but still right. the police get at well, them, get at okay. them and uh, take them to court. Yeah. A lot of them. One person is serving a 40 year sentence for abuse of his two daughters. Fantastic. So, like that, those are yeah. things. The only way you uh, can uh, control yeah. it is involving the police, and involving the courts, and that away. we are doing. That's yeah. part of our work. Great. Well, on that note, we're going to take another little break. Um, but when we come back after a break, uh, we're going to have a lot more chat. <laughs> so for everyone at home, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with a lot more from Maureen after this short break. So we'll see you soon. Hi, and welcome back to ECV Power Women. Uh, we've been having an incredibly fascinating and wonderful chat with Maureen Senaviratna. Um, Maureen, I understand that you're very passionate about training for employment. Yes. Would you like to tell us a bit about that? We are passionate about that because it is the only alternative. Yeah. It is the only alternative that you can give a poor boy whom, or a girl who is at risk of abuse. Yeah. Uh, I'm not talking of parental abuse, I'm yeah. talking of children who are sold as prostitutes. Right. So if they are offering those children an alternative 
alternative yeah. and we are also keeping our eyes on the pedophile yeah. who is uh, Doing, trying yeah. to trying to tempt these children yeah. we feel after all the years of our experience that training those children for some form of legitimate employment it's, is one answer yeah. to stop this it's very hard work what you do you've got to be i think an incredibly strong person yeah. to kind of deal with the cases that you come across I mean, it's, yeah it's to control uh, outfit yeah. like i control because we have so many places yeah. like candy angulana ratwalana mount lavelia devala murattua all over we work and for that of course you need to have a strong person yeah. at the head a strong yeah. person uh, and because emotionally it must be very hard as well yeah. it's, it's an yes. emotionally it's, yeah. it's a hard because job. you know all the time your emotions are yeah. involved no you yeah. feel sorry for them yeah. you feel angry yeah. uh, about it and uh, so you have to prevent it from coming to that stage yeah. you have to prevent it you have to call a halt there like uh, this stops here yeah, yeah. that's right so when you take a child say from about uh, 10 years and you bring them to our informal yeah. programs then that child will continue to be with peace at least for 5 or 6 years right, okay. and then finally the child will be encouraged to get a job yeah. and not only that the child sometimes educates the parents right. that happens that, that happens Maureen I want to ask you what were you like as a child I was very inquisitive <laughs> okay <laughs> which is always a good thing I was as a child I was very I was a only girl in the family and yeah. I had one brother right. so I tended to you know be by myself a lot yeah. and uh, uh, my reading I was reading reading I think from the age of 5 okay. then when I went to school Uh, I generally did well yeah. and uh, I was a bit popular with the nuns and all that okay. because I was well behaved <laughs> <laughs> hopefully <laughs> and uh, they so and I enjoyed my school days yeah. I really enjoyed we I was at uh, Holy Family Convent Bangalore right. okay. and uh, we I had we had also very good teachers yeah. they brought out the best in us right. that is the important thing in yeah. teaching then I also did a short spell of teaching okay. there uh, and i realized that uh, education is not giving but bringing out right. but the yeah. child already has yeah. so that was uh, at home but at home i was mostly reading and i also like cookery okay. so i used to be always either making something uh, in the kitchen or reading reading that was my life here yeah. and tell us a little bit about your sons my sons yes oh. yeah and and son you have two sons i have two sons uh, from my first marriage yeah. i had two sons Uh, I married a planter yeah. and uh, these two boys Shane and Kevin uh, but my marriage failed after right. about 5 years yeah. I took a divorce right. the children stayed with me yeah. but they went to boarding school okay. they went to St Anthony's College Candy yeah. from the time they were very very Little. small Kevin was not even 5 okay. when he went when to he college went. Uh. but they stayed at the boarding for 14 years coming right. home for the holidays they did well yeah. both of them did well in sport and in studies they did quite well and they were like part of the school they were like part <laughs> of the school. the school 14 life. years they were there <laughs> and uh, during the holiday then i made my second marriage yeah. and they got on well with my second husband yeah. unfortunately about 5 years ago he died of cancer Sorry but he that. was very good to my children yeah. and he was like a role model to them he was a man in the air force he was right. an air force officer yeah. and uh, he always served as a role model and yeah. he was always you know he joined with them he played with them yeah. he took them on hikes uh, he established a good relationship with them yeah then my son elder son joined the army okay. straight after school he was in the army for many years and he retired as a colonel right and now he joined the army when he was about 18 oh my goodness yeah. so straight yeah. out of school yeah. pretty much straight out of school yeah. one day in school next, next day, day in the army, army. <laughs> and uh, then kevin went abroad he yeah. went to the middle east and he worked in the middle east for many years and then he did marketing okay. he did marketing but now at the for some years he's working with me right. he works so with me at okay. peace and he does a wonderful job with all that i wanted to ask you if you have any advice for the younger generation you know for people who want to get into the line of work that you're in 
do you, would you have any advice for them? To the young people? Yeah. You know, I always advise the young people, including my three grandchildren, yeah. to be concerned about other people, right. not to be selfish, to yeah. think about the problems of other people. Yeah. And uh, in our programs, I must say, we have been very successful in giving that message uh, to be loyal and to their friends, to their family yeah. and to the country and also uh, to always uh, not to think that everything is perfect in yeah. the garden. They, mu they must, as young people, they must also make a contribution as much as they, they can, can to improve, if they can, society. Wonderful. Well, that's a fantastic sentiment. We're going to go into another little break, but oh. we'll be back with some messages from your friends and family. Oh. So everyone at home, uh, we're coming back with our confession cam segment. So don't miss it. We'll be back after this little break. Hi, and you're watching ETV Power Women. Uh, we've got Maureen Senevirat on the show with us today. Um, if you missed the first half, which I'm sure you didn't. <laughs> Maureen, we've got some of your friends and family. Uh, we got a few of them together and, and we asked them some questions about you and, and, you know, asked them to talk a little bit about you. So I'd like to show that to you now, uh, which is on that screen. So let's take a look at that. I'm really happy to have a mother like Mrs. Maureen Srinivasan. In fact, I get choked when I have to answer that question because all that I am today is thanks to the guidance, the love and affection, the advice that I have obtained from my mother. When this work was new to me, she's the one who taught me, guided me and showed me the way forward. Today, I could 100% say that all I have achieved in every way, be it academic, sports, or career, she has been the person who has been instrumental in helping me in every possible way. Working in the government department, uh, some of our seniors, they don't appreciate our work. That is a normal uh, in the department. But here, I am very happy to say that Ms. Senior Ratna, if we do the good, do good work. She is very happy. She guide and advise us how to be how to be a good uh, orator and speak on the relevant subjects. She does that always. And in fact, she recommended me for international conferences. And I am very happy indeed because in the, 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 when I was in the department, I never got a call because all the calls were done by medical officers. Even what we get. But after joining this. Uh, I am very happy to say that I went to so many countries because of her uh, to represent the peace on various uh, international and regional conferences. But she is a very, uh, uh, very extraordinary person in the sense that uh, she is friendly and never bosses us. As though she is the chairman, she never bosses us. She wants our idea to implement and uh, then do our work. And she always uh, appreciates the good work that we do. I hope you enjoyed that Hello, little please. segment, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to take another little break, um, but when we come back, yes. um, I have a list of 10 questions that I'm going to ask you. Um, I just want you to tell me whatever comes into your mind when I ask you these questions. So we're going to do that after this short break, so don't go anywhere. We're back um, with our rapid fire round after this break. We'll see you soon. Hi, and welcome back to ETV Power Women. Uh, we've come to the final sort of segment of our show where I get to ask our guest some questions. So Maureen, I'm just gonna fire these questions at you. Just tell me whatever pops into your head. Okay, first one. What is the toughest thing about being a single mother? What would you say? Uh, being a single mother when the children are very small, uh, is a big responsibility. It's a big responsibility, but I don't want to boast, but I was able to tackle it because yeah. I was determined that uh, 
uh, my two sons should grow up as responsible human beings. What is the first thought that comes to you when you look in the mirror? The first thought is, I don't now much think about it, but in the days when I looked in the mirror and I thought, uh, why should I not be fairer? <laughs> Why am I not fairer? Uh, because my brother was yeah. very fair. What did you buy after you got your first salary? Straight to the bookshop. If I gave you an elephant, where would you hide it? Oh where God, would I would start it? running a mile. <laughs> if you lived your life over again, uh, what would be the first thing that you would change, if anything, if you, if you could change anything? I would definitely have gone to the university. Yeah. I would not have uh, taken, though I loved writing yes. and though I loved journalism, I would have gone to the university and done an English honours course and then gone Got to journalism. Yeah. I regret that. Next question is what's your biggest regret? Uh, well, that's not really my yeah. biggest regret, but uh, perhaps that would have led me on a different path, yeah. a different path. Uh, I might have ended up in the boring role of a teacher, right. but uh, I can't grumble as such yeah. uh, because I have travelled considerably yeah. and all because of my work. What would you say is your greatest achievement? Uh, I have won prizes yeah. uh, and uh, for my books, for right. books, my books, uh, some of my books have won awards. Okay. Uh, here in Sri Lanka, the national awards, my books have won. I, I write books also. Yeah. And uh, the other thing is the achievements of peace. Okay. If you could meet anyone in the world, uh, dead or alive, who would it be and why? What would you say to them? Uh, right at the moment, I would like to meet Michelle Ob Obama. Obama. Okay. If you were stranded on a desert island, what are the three things that you would take with you? What would I take? Yeah. Strange, I'm not a very religious person, yeah. but I would take the Bible okay. because it's a readable book and yeah. it's so long. <laughs> <laughs> then I would try to have a mobile phone uh -huh. that might make contact <laughs> with some people. And uh, the other thing, of course, uh, I hope there will be some cooking utensils to make a meal. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, those were all my questions and you answered them beautifully. <laughs> so, and I think uh, okay. for everyone at home, I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll be back again next week with another very special guest. Um, so don't forget to tune in and we'll see you then. Goodbye. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I hope it was, it was yeah.